Hey guys, um, we have a little kitty here, and um, someone just brought this cat in. The story was it was hit by a car um, two months ago, and and they've had it, and its breathing is kind of messed up. And let's see if we can get her, get him to show us what's going on. He's kind of breathing with his abdomen down here. He's semi-feral too, so he's kind of scared, nervous of us right now. But you can see his abdomen breathing, uh, shrinking in right here as he's breathing, and that is not a normal way to breathe. We are going to anesthetize him and take an x-ray and figure out what's going on. And when we hear that they've been hit by a car, we always think that they may have a, a hernia, a diaphragmatic hernia, where their, basically their abdominal contents are pushed up in their abdomens, I mean in their thorax. So we're going to take a little x-ray and figure out what's going on. I put some barium in the cat's esophagus, and barium is a contrast media. It's used for x-rays. It allows you to tell where organs like the stomach, the esophagus, and the intestines are. Um, so we put this down the cat's esophagus, and then we took some x-rays, and the cat has a diaphragmatic hernia. This is the cat laying on its side. The head is going this way, the tail is going this way. These are ribs coming down here, kind of hard to see. The diaphragm is normally right here, and the liver is normally here, and there's intestines and a stomach all back here normally. Um, right here we have a big meaty organ here, looks much like the liver. This giant white thing is a stomach full of barium. All this white is the barium that we put in there, and it is obviously extending way up into here, meaning that there is a diaphragmatic hernia. Here is the cat laying on its back. This is what we call a ventrodorsal view. Head is up here. These are the front legs up here at the top. Um, and there is a thin line of white coming down here. That's the esophagus with some barium in it. And then the stomach is here, kind of where it should be, but then it comes back up here because there's a big chunk of it in the thoracic cavity. There's a lot of meat right in here. And, and this all should be lung field right here, like this. This black right here is lung field. This all should be like this. Here's the heart pushed off to the side over here. And the heart should be about this level, but not necessarily pushed way over to the side. There's some more meaty stuff over here. So a lot of junk in there. The diaphragm is muscle that contracts and expands, and that's what fills your lungs up with air. So a diaphragmatic hernia is basically a hole in your diaphragm. Um, and in cats and dogs, they can be congenital, meaning from birth, but usually they are traumatic, and that's what this one was. We don't really know the history because the current owners only had the cat for three weeks. They just know it was hit by a car, um, and they notice that its breathing is kind of funny, and it gets tired very quickly. Um, you know, whenever it does any exercise like a normal kitten does, this one just seems to get really winded and just lays down and doesn't want to do anything anymore. Obviously, this cat has been alive and doing well for two months since the, um, since the, the car hit him, but, you know, there's, there's a hole there, and at any time, if he jumped or did something to cause a little more physical exertion, he could theoretically put pressure in the abdomen, um, and that would push more stuff up into the thorax, and, and anything like that could be potentially fatal. And a cat's diaphragm is usually roughly five, six inches across. Um, and this cat had about a two to three inch rip in its diaphragm. Um, the entire stomach was up there. More stomach. There we go. Oh, the liver fell back in there now. About half of the liver was in the thoracic cavity and a bunch of intestines. I pulled a big loop of intestines out. That is all in the chest. Yep, there it went. It wasn't really strangulated or anything though. Because the hole was pretty loose. The hole's huge. Once you open up that thoracic cavity, they need a negative pressure to, to operate their lungs. They're using that diaphragm to move their lungs, and we had the diaphragm cut wide open, so it's not working. We were having to breathe for him, and, uh, and he just wasn't doing real well. But luckily, we, we did it as quickly as we could, and um, we actually, he's, he kind of wasn't breathing on his own at the end of surgery. We had to pull all of the extra air from his thoracic cavity out with syringes. Um, I pulled like 150 milliliters of air out, which is, is a lot to be in a little bitty um, cat's chest. Um, we pull it all out and he started breathing on his own and he's doing fairly well. This is a, a pretty serious surgery and the literature it gives a guarded prognosis which means not a very good one and even after the surgery you know once they pull through the surgery they're not out of the woods. They say that um, up until 24 hours after the surgery there's still a pretty good chance that they're not going to make it. Once they get to that kind of 24 hour limit and they're still doing pretty well then the, the chances are, are pretty good that they're going to make it. So it's been about five hours since the surgery. We've just kind of been watching him, monitoring him this morning and he is pretty tired. He still has some tranquilizers on board um, and he's obviously very sore. Hey bud. No, 
not feeling very good at all. Um, but he's been doing good for this five hours, so I'm hoping that, that he's going to be one of those that pulls through. He's, he's breathing a little labored, but honestly, better than he was. So we're just going to keep watching him, and we'll check in with him tomorrow morning and see how he's doing. Neat bud. Good boy. It is about 9 o'clock at night. Just came up here to check on this little kitty. Um, still doing well, and uh, I mean, it's been like eight and a half hours since we finished surgery, so that's good. Like I said before, once they hit the, the 24 hour mark, that's when we can um, be assured that they're going to they're gonna do well. So I think since he's still looking pretty good right now, he's got a pretty good chance. So we'll check back um, tomorrow morning and uh, let you know how he's doing. But I was thankful to see that he's still doing pretty well and, and seems pretty stable right now. It is 7.45 in the morning and I am happy to see our little kitty is doing well. Still has some short, shallow breaths, but if you think about it, his diaphragm is split wide open and we moved all of his organs around inside, so he probably is very sore. Um, but he's doing good and he's getting pretty close to the 24 hour mark. We have probably about four hours to go um, before we can say that he's got a, a pretty good chance. So, doing well. I'm, I'm pretty hopeful now. Here's Tom two weeks after surgery. Let's see if we can see his breathing. Can't really see it, which is good. That means it's normal. He's not labored anymore. All healed up. He's been doing good at home, seems to be feeling great. I'm gonna pull his staples out today. He's got staples all in that incision line. And uh we'll see how well it all healed up. He's a good cat. Not every cat will let you do this to him. Looks like Tommy had a full recovery. He's doing well and uh, he's going to live a good long life. Thank you all for watching Vet Ranch and uh, we'll see you next time. Sometimes when you're feeling young and you're feeling tough And you're all caught up but you don't walk right and you don't talk right And there ain't nothing wrong with feeling strong But I know what you're going through I know cause I've been there too I don't walk right and I don't talk right And there ain't nothing wrong with feeling strong But I wanna be there for you honey Working my job